All right, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to drive the Rhode Island coast. Now, just so you know, right this second, I'm in Massachusetts, right next to the border of Rhode Island. Here, let me show you on the map. There, you, there I am, the blue dot. You can see Boston to the north and the east. New York southwest. This is Rhode Island, this little area here. Let me uh, tighten up the map. Yeah, so here I am up here. This is the coast of Rhode Island. So I'm going to go up here and then hit Newport and just kind of cruise along here to the town over here, Westerly, I believe it's called. Yeah, there I am. This is the Rhode Island border. So, off we go. Uh, going to go to a town called Bristol first. This town, Bristol, I mean, wow. It is packed with history and buildings. There's no way I, I can tell you everything or show you everything. Uh, I'm just going to show you what I found interesting about the town. Honestly, to do Bristol justice, it would be <laughs> like a three-hour, four-hour video just on that town alone. So, uh, if I could get from behind this garbage truck, I will make my way into Rhode Island from here in Massachusetts. Cool. All right. So, uh, well, according to this, I'm in Rhode Island already. So, all right. Um, let's head to Bristol first. Well, I'm crossing what will most likely be one of many bridges. All right, guys, I am in Bristol. I'm gonna get out and show you the place, walk around a bit. Look at the map real quick, though. There I am, south of Providence. Going to head to Newport next and then kind of stick along the coast here. But I wanted to come to this town because of the uh, history. But let's do a mileage log real quick. 102,886 miles on the Bronco. It is 72 degrees Fahrenheit, that is, what is that, 22 Celsius. It is a Monday, uh, what is it, yeah, 8.30 in the morning, it's pretty early. Getting started a little bit earlier today. Anyway, um, it's pretty quaint and nice, isn't it? Let's give you a look here and I'm going to walk down to the coastline here and uh, I'm going to tell you about the town. The main employers here are boat building and tourism as you can imagine. A lot of history here but probably what Bristol's most famous for is the DeWolf family. They probably don't want to be famous for that, but they are because the D. Wolf family was the most prolific slavers in United States history. It's a family that lived here who enslaved over 10,000 Africans. Uh, the patriarch of the family, James D. Wolf, was the second richest person in the United States when he died. So, yeah, they made a lot of money off of it. I'm going to go to their house here shortly, but first of all, let's take a look uh, over here. Got some stuff to see. Oh, it looks like a, an old pirate schooner over here. We'll have to go t take a look at that, huh? But anyway, let's talk about Bristol. 
the census goes all the way back to 1748. Uh, there were 1,069 people here. Today there are a little over 22,000. And uh, that's peak population. Uh, median age is 43. Uh, gender breakdown is 50-50. 93% of the town is white. 2% Hispanic, 2% Asian, 1% Black, last 2% mixed. And I'm going to go over here and see what we can find. Welcome to Bristol, Rhode Island. Awesome. Now, how about a few more numbers? Median household income. It's $80,000 a year, a little over $80,000 comes out to a little over fifteen hundred dollars a week that is above the uh, US median US median is sixty nine thousand so they have some good incomes here it sure is quiet and peaceful here isn't it I'm just being quiet for a second so you guys can enjoy the silence as well for a second nice huh okay uh, some of the other numbers poverty really low 6% for children 17 and under it is 4% folks 65 and older it is 8% so all those numbers are well below US crime is low too last year 14 incidents per 1,000 people uh, US average is 23 so it's down there. Now this town is packed with lots of history and architecture. I'll tell you a little bit. Uh, go to a few places. Uh, for now though, I'm just, um, just going to show you this. It's nice, huh? You can get used to it. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning. Perfect temperature. This is the original Bristol County Courthouse. Bristol is the county seat. Uh, actually, they call it a state house instead of a courthouse. This was built in 1816. I'm going to walk over there and get a closer look. Yeah, 1816. This is federal style architecture. Uh, that is an American architecture, a U.S. architecture, developed in the late 1700s. They sure have done a great job with it. Uh, it's in immaculate condition. It's a museum now, uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's not the official courthouse anymore. I don't think um, Rhode Island has county courthouses that kind of operation anymore. I think it's all handled, I believe I read, in Providence. Um, you know, Rhode Island is so small, I guess that would be perfectly fine. Anyway, um, yeah, here's First Baptist Church. Um, let's see. It was built in 1882. So it is pretty awesome too, isn't it? Oh, it says renovated 1882. It may actually be older. It is older. Here we go. First Baptist Church erected 1814. How about that? Wow. Over 200 years old when that was first built. Can you imagine what this area looked like then? I'll swing around. Honestly, it might have looked pretty close to the same. Some of these houses might be that old. Now I'm walking 
up to the Joseph Reynolds house built in 1700 first period architecture that's uh, American colonial um, this was the headquarters the Revolutionary War headquarters for the Marquis de Lafayette one of the most celebrated military leaders in our history I think it's a private residence now let me go check it out from the side yeah, so here's the house from the side one of the elements to the architecture is the fireplaces are in the middle uh, anyway yeah it might be a pri private residence I'm surprised this is not a museum I mean Lafayette had his headquarters here during the Revolutionary War that's amazing history Lafayette was so popular that he could have been president of the United States um, but he was not born in the United States so it couldn't happen but wow an incredible house with incredible history all right a couple other things I want to show you now this huge house well, this is a mansion. This is called Linden Place, built in 1810. Looks like the gate is open. Go walk out on the lawn. Now, you remember me telling you about the DeWolf family? The family that built their fortune on slaving. This was their house. magnificent the house eventually passed to Samuel Colt nephew of the inventor of the Colt revolver that guy's name was Samuel Colt as well but anyway this was the nephew uh, Samuel Colt's son married actress Ethel Barrymore she was the great aunt of Drew Barrymore anyway the building is a museum now but um, what an incredible structure. You know, the DeWolf family, it's interesting. Even after the Civil War was over and it was illegal to bring slaves in or even have a slave, they still kept at it. They just brought them into their plantation in Cuba. Yeah, they did it for quite a few years after the Civil War. A couple more things. This Bristol was named after the one in England. Also, this was the first town in the United States to celebrate the 4th of July. It's a big deal here. They actually begin on June 14th, celebrate for several weeks. Because of this, the town bills itself as the most patriotic town in the country. Now, the median home value for this town is $363,000. Incredible homes. Some that you can tell are very old. I mean, these two houses, these were built, I'd bet money in the 1800s, maybe even the early 1800s. That's something, isn't it? This is a beautiful town. I mean, wow. You can see the money here. High median household incomes, the really expensive houses. Uh, you see it everywhere. It's a gorgeous town. Okay. Well, I think that's it for here. I'm going to head to uh, Newport next. All right, I am in Newport now. You can see down here near the coast. 
the downtown is pretty amazing looking already lots of shops restaurants all kinds of places where you can buy oddities of all sorts yeah it's pretty awesome I guess I will tell you about the town as I make my way through it there's a restaurant here and it smells really good it smells fantastic anyway Newport was founded in 1639 makes it one of this country's oldest cities. The census goes back to the year 1708. In 1708 there were 2200 people here. Peak population was in 1960. There were a little over 47,000. Today there are just over 25,000 people. Uh, that is a pretty significant population loss, almost half. But you don't know it, or you wouldn't know it, walking and driving through the city. There's all kinds of stuff going on here. Yeah, I'm going to be at that building here shortly. Anyway, um, how about some of the other numbers? Median age here is 35. 51% female. 49% male, 77% of the town is white, 9% Hispanic, 7% black, 2% Asian, 1% Native American, last 4% mixed. Yeah, it's just uh, filled with all kinds of little cafes and restaurants. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, that doesn't hurt. Got some people out today, walking the uh, sidewalks. Let's see, median household income, 77,000 a year. That's uh, just shy of 1,500 a week. Uh, so they've got good income. Poverty, I'm a little surprised by these numbers. Uh, overall, 16%. Uh, children's poverty, 17 and under, is surprising. 29% did not expect that folks 65 and older it is 8% crime is pretty low last year 19 incidents per 1,000 US average is 23 this is City Hall here in Newport built in 1900 it has been changed a little bit some renovations were done after a fire that was in 1925 but for the most part the building is the same it's on the National Register as you can well imagine all right uh, oh, why don't I just walk around here see what else I can find sure is nice though isn't it Tons of restaurants down here. Oh boy, there you go. Where at? Yeah, he's from Lockdown. A lot of really old buildings. Man, I can't believe all these pubs and taverns. <laughs> they must do a lot of drinking here in Newport. I'm not criticizing though. My favorite place is usually a bar or a pub. Speaking of taverns, check this one out. This is White Horse Tavern, built in 1673. It is the oldest operating tavern in the United States. Now it's had other jobs. It's been a courthouse acted as city hall, but it's always been a tavern as well to this day. 
it is still open for cocktails and dinner. 1673, America's oldest tavern, yearly gathering place of the members of the colonial legislature. I mean, that's astonishing to me. <laughs> How old this is. Look, it's even got a little patio here. We're sitting outside. It's got everything. And that is amazing. Now, conveniently, right next to this tavern is the St. Paul's Methodist Church. Itself built in 1806. But after a night of carrying on at the tavern, perhaps, maybe you sinned. You can come here and get yourself straightened out. Wait a minute, what's this say? St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Well, I'm gonna have to get closer. St. Paul's United Methodist Church, 1806, world's <laughs> oldest Methodist church. Letting that bus go by. With steeple and bell. How about that? Oh, cool. Jailhouse Inn. <laughs> that might be a fun place to stay at. Now this is the Turo Synagogue. I guess I'm pronouncing it right. T-O-U-R-O. Built in 1763, this is the oldest synagogue in the United States. There was a large Jewish population here. I think there still is. But yeah, a lot of Jewish people settled here uh, in the 1700s. And um, yeah, this synagogue still operates to this day since 1763 that is astonishing and um, this is the neighborhood it's in it's incredible isn't it let's see I'm just gonna walk down the street show you uh, the neighborhoods a little residential The thing that hits you right off the bat, walking and driving in this town, is the narrow streets. Now that's obvious, or obviously because this is an old town. You know, in Texas we're just used to wide, wide streets with lots of room. It's always interesting to come over here to the East Coast, where everything is really narrow. Anyway, uh, let's see the median home value in this town. Are you ready for this? It's $530,000. Oh, beautiful homes though. It doesn't really surprise you. You know, those of you who watch my channel, I go to so many places where median home values are in the 40s, $50,000, $60,000. Man, talk about being in a whole different universe. In a town where the homes are worth half a million dollars. Look at this one. Uh, painted black. It's got a Canadian flag out front. That is so interesting looking. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe someone can fill in. Wow. Uh, I'm on Mary and Division Street, by the way. In case you want to know where I'm at. Everywhere you walk in this town, there are National Register placards. 
I mean, here, let's look at this one real quick. At least a Johnson House, 1750 on a National Register. It would be impossible for me to show you everything in this town. It is just chock full of history and historical homes. It's crazy. Um, there's still some more to the town I haven't told you about yet. It is home to the Naval War College and the Naval Undersea uh, Warfare College. Uh, the Navy has a huge presence here and they do a lot of training. Uh, Dwight D. I uh, Eisenhower and John F. Kennedy both had summer White Houses here. So you know the president always takes breaks from Washington and goes to wherever his particular place is. Uh, both those presidents came here. I was reading that um, the wealthiest people in the United States late 1800s into the 1900s this is where they would summer. Uh, this is a big sailing town. In fact uh, it calls itself the sailing capital of the world. Look what we got. He is not scared of me at all. I guess I better give him a scratch on his ears, huh? What do you guys think? He's pretty, isn't he? Let's get him in frame here. How you doing, buddy? You're going to be famous. <laughs> well, relatively famous anyway. Uh, this part of downtown looks even older. Uh, I think these are yeah brick streets. I am walking to my next destination and I ran across this. I mean, wow. Cogus Hall House, 1710. That is a really old house. Wow. It's on a National Register. Obviously. Man, that is. That's the oldest house I've ever seen, I think. Now this is St. Mary's Church. I'm trying to get you a good angle because of the sun so you can see it. This church was built in 1852. It's Gothic. You can totally see that. But here's what's significant about this church. It is inside this church that John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline, is it Bouvier? All you had to say is the word Jackie and people knew who you were talking about back then. But anyway, it is here. They got married. I think I can go inside, but let's look at this sign here first. St. Mary's Parish was founded in, or founded April 8, 1828, is the oldest parish in the Diocese of Providence. Let's see, President John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Lee Bouvier married here. 
September 12, 1953. Ain't that something? You think we can go inside? Maybe. Let's check it out. Oh, I thought there was a sign that said we could. Here's another angle of the church. There is a sign that says we can go in too. And look here, open doors. Let's go take a look. I am inside. Well, look, they have a picture here for the occasion. When those two got married. Uh, let me get to the side here so you can see it better. And that happened in here. It's something, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's something to see. That is the Point Judith Lighthouse, built in 1856. I was thinking I could go up to it and check it out, but I guess you can't. It's fenced off uh, U.S. Department of Homeland Security. So I guess the Coast Guard still runs it. I guess it's still active. Anyway, yeah, I can't go over there. Anyway, here I am on the map. Uh, I'm down here. Kind of in the middle of Rhode Island. There's... Uh, the state line there and the state line there that's the Atlantic Ocean over here I'm gonna get out and take a look here for a, a minute or two but uh, when I get back in I'm just gonna hop here and then drive along the coast to Westerly the town that's right here on the border well let's see I'm out here by the lighthouse along the coastline. How about if I give you a look? Yeah, it's really calm and quiet here. Lots of boats out in the water. Pretty nice. Yeah, 
can see more of the ocean there. And then there's the lighthouse. All right, everyone, I am in Westerly, right there. The very southwest corner of the state. Well, the first thing I spotted getting out of the car is this statue. Cristoforo Colombo. Uh, he's behind a fence and locked up. Hmm. Yeah, it's a nice park here. This is the uh, library. And they've got this fountain down here. Now let's go take a closer look. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? A uh, park that they have here. Just off downtown. But that's where we're going to go right now. Go check out downtown. The uh, traffic coming into this downtown, uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. I'm not looking forward to trying to get out of here. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's see, the population of Westerly is 23,400. Uh, that's peak population. Median age is 50. Town's a little bit older. Gender breakdown, 50-50. 89% of the town is white, 4% Hispanic, 3% Asian, 1% black, 3% mixed. Shall we read about this uh, Westerly Library? Uh, memorial to the Civil War soldiers, first and largest memorial in the park. Let's see, it built it was built in 1894. Wow. I would have never guessed it was that old. All right, the uh, median household income is 79,600 a year. That's over 1,500 a week. Poverty in this town is really low, 6% overall. 17 and under, it's 5%. 65 and over, it is 6%. Crime is low too, very low. Last year, eight incidents per 1,000 people. For the U.S. as a whole, it's 23. That is a third lower, or two-thirds lower. Anyway, you get the picture. Crime here is very low. Uh, tourism big business here. Additionally, they produce a lot of granite here. And uh, let's see one more. The median home value here is $327,000. So again, another town where house is going to cost you well above the U.S. median. The U.S. median is $282,000. So Rhode Island, uh, Rhode Island is nice but it's gonna cost you. You're gonna need some money <laughs> to buy a house here. Here's a little bit more of the downtown. Uh, they got a theater over there, looks like. Those of you who watched Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, you'll be older. I did as a kid. Ruth Buzzy, who was on that show, she was born here. This is the post office here in downtown, built in 1914. This was designed by James Knox Taylor. Uh, you guys may remember, I told you about him in Newark, New York. He was, I believe, the first official architect of the Treasury Department, one of the most prolific architects in US history. 
designed hundreds of government buildings. He designed the post office in Newark, New York, along the Erie Canal. That video, he designed this one too. Another look up downtown Westerly. Uh, this is the Pocatuck River. There's the spelling. It is the border between Rhode Island and Connecticut. So that is Connecticut there. And this is Rhode Island on this side. You can see the river snakes down that way. This is the border between the two states. Anyway, I'm not going to Connecticut. I'm going to stay in Rhode Island. Now I would think this is the most significant home in the town. This is the Babcock Smith home, built in 1734. It was the home of Dr. Joshua Babcock, a close friend of Benjamin Franklin and George Washington, both of whom he had over many times inside that house. They have tours, but um, it's closed right now. But can you imagine being in the same four walls, or however many walls it has, that George Washington and Benjamin Franklin themselves were in at one time? This is a residential street, a couple blocks off downtown. Kind of what I expected. Uh, big, beautiful, very old houses. Yeah, I saw a house for sale here. I'm on Summer Street. You guys want to check and see what they want for it? 39 Summer Street in Westerly. I admit, I'm curious, how much does a house like that go for? Especially with, or being in a town where the median home values are over 300,000. This would be your neighbors, by the way. Not bad, huh? down here on the coast way 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 east the southeast corner anyway I was gonna get out and take a look but it is just jam-packed with people so uh, I'm gonna end the video here guys um, I will be grabbing Nicole and we will be taking a look at some stuff in Massachusetts. Yeah, that's coming up next.